Hey, hey, everyone, this is Dan, the GM, bringing you episode 151 of What the Dice. Have you given us a rating or a review? No? Well, why wait? Spotify, Good Pods, Podchaser, and Apple all have ways for you to rate and review us, and it would be greatly appreciated if you took the time to do that. It helps small shows like us grow. And that's it. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to let you all get on with this week's episode. I'm Dan the GM, this is What the Dice, and this is episode 151. Enjoy. We come down to the coastline as we see the storyteller standing out by the ocean side. A campfire has already been lit, and he is skipping stones into the ocean. These stones are small and very reflective, almost seem to have a rainbow hue as they skip and bounce across the calm ocean. The storyteller stops and looks at us for a moment before chucking the last of the strangely shaped, shiny stones into the water. Turning to us, he smiles and walks and sits on a stump. Well, 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 me friends. It seems as if the adventurers have gotten deeper into Kazanov's manor. In the basement, he seems to have a collection of items used to acquire information in a less than scrupulous manner. I mean, if your enemy has information and you need it, in the time of magic, such devices seem archaic and evil. Well, speaking of evil, the Fey have these crystals, and the adventurers have dealt with a few of them, but there are many more to come. These strange crystals have a strange power about them. The ability to pull things towards them when they are damaged, and the ability to force creatures to run from them. Well, the adventurers still have a mana to deal with, so sit back, relax, and hear me tell. In the last episode, the adventurers got into the basement, filled with strange eggs of fae and water galore. They set up a new attack using a strange new weapon purchased from Mexi, which literally scattered small bits of fire three times, disintegrating all but one Fey who decided to charge the team. With a quick shot from Kalila, it put that last Fey out of its miserable misery. Moving into the strange room that is filled with devices of torture, they find themselves face to face with a large black crystal in the shape of a skull. Fighting back the deep urge to run and hide, Kalila faces her fears and preps to do some damage. With a quick tutorial from the Fibulus, she is handed his boomstick and is, with the quickness of a cat, fires, dealing massive amounts of damage as the skull fractures and shatters, sending Kalila back, sliding, hitting the wall at high speeds, leaving claw marks across the ground. We come back as Kalila is flying backwards. As you all hear a meow, meow. Um, you are right. Ow. Walls hurt. They tend to you need to have a little more brace in your legs there. Sorry. She'll hand the gun back. Thank you. Much louder when it's next to your ear. And that was with the silencer on it. Oh, yeah, there was a silencer, so it might not have been so loud. No, it was still pretty loud. Okay, fair. But she'll peer into the room to make sure it's shattered and that she did a good job. You see this strange black powdery sparkly bits landing on the ground and 
on the ground you find a couple of sharpened crystal heads they are about the same size and dimension as a arrowhead and they are fading their darkness but the darkness crystals themselves are still held true just say defibulous yes can we put these in the same box as your box mine's fine She'll point at the arrowheads, not really wanting to touch them right away. Interesting. Yeah. I kind of wonder what happened if Clyde would have hit it. I wonder if it would have given him a crystal for that slot sword that we have carrying around still. Highly possible. <laughs> yeah, let's put those in here. She'll help shuffle them into the box. All right, so you have ten little crystal heads. Wasn't there chanting or something coming from the room when you broke that? Yeah, I did hear chanting, and she's looking around trying to figure it out. Confused uh, and perplexed by it. You notice that the stonework is mending slowly. You don't see the strange icor that was dripping. You see that it is completely gone. The... The ground itself doesn't seem as moist as the rest of the room was. And the room itself almost has a chilled feel to it. It is kind of an uncomfortable cold, but it is cooler in here than it was when you first entered. As well, it's colder now. I wonder if there's some kind of spirits or enchant or something. Good question. She's going to detect some magic, look around the room, see if the walls are glowing. Yes. This manor has definitely got magic to it. She goes, yeah, I think he has the manor that's enchanted somehow. There's glowing everything. That or it's the side effect of these crystals. I can't tell which, but I'm not going to stare into it that, that long. What would you guys like to do next? Did he say how many of those crystals we had to break? No, he didn't. I believe he did say four. I th I didn't remember catching it, so... But I'll go with that. The voice in the sky says four. There might be four of them. That's two down. Shall we just make sure? I don't think there's any more in the basement down here, but quick peek around... Eh, probably a good idea. All right. Left or right? Uh, left. Check out the left side of the, the basement here. Bow at the ready in case there's still a fae lingering around the corner. As you enter, this room is got cells lining the wall. The depth of the cells are just wide enough for a, a human to stand or lay well slightly bigger than that actually maybe something closer to an orc that can just stand or lay and be rather uncomfortable you see that this area has hay laid out behind the jail cells and the stonework is cut smooth and designed to where all the stones are almost look like they're a single piece. The ironwork itself is embedded into the stone where there is no way in or out. You see no doors or locks. They are just solid iron. It is currently completely empty. Well, Kalila's not going to dwell on the uh, scenery in here and go, nope, no more crystals, and go back down the other side of the hallway. Not less defibulous is staying for some reason. Yeah. Walking into this room, it's different. There's a large circular table with several chairs spewed about. On the table itself is 
a map of the known continent with little indications of kingdoms. A white block that is roughly shaped in the size of the the silhouette of the holy city. One of Hold's Keep and the Rat Kingdom and several others about. This Defibulous, give me a just straight int check. So int uh, roll plus your int modifier. Dirty 20. With a dirty 20, you stare at this and you kind of recognize it. It's a very classic war room, usually used by tacticians or kings that are waging massive wars. The chairs here are old and well used, but it doesn't look like this room has seen much use. On the walls itself, you see some scribblings of some papers of the, you know, orcs have been pushed back on this date and you begin to go through it and you're starting to remember there was a war a long time ago when the orcs rose up and were trying to wipe out kingdom after kingdom and you remember that there was something some fighters some some heroes that pushed the orcs back you, you don't remember names, and it's hard to remember specifics, but you do remember from your your schooling that there was a, a time where orcs were more dangerous than they are now. There were more of them. They were more aligned under a single banner instead of the multiple banners they are now. It was like, wow, this is definitely old. Oh, she comes over to Fabulous. Yeah, this looks like a classic war room, or at least a war room that hasn't seen use in years, but he, like, points to the stuff. This is back, like, I don't remember the exact year. It was back when I was in school. But this is when the orcs used to actually were unified and a bigger threat to everyone and were kicking everyone's ass. Yeah, I don't remember who finally beat them and how, but this is what a lot of this stuff is talking about, is back when all this was going on. Hmm. I Wait, wonder if that... our vampire friend was involved? That's possible. I was going to say, uh, out of character, isn't that where Hold's Keep earned its, ti- earned its uh, title? Yes, yes it was. I don't know if you put that two and two together on that one. He would remember, like, Hold's Keep was the quintessential point. That was the, the point where these strange heroes fought back. Oh, 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 okay, yeah, right. I, I remember. This would have been when Holds Keep made a name for itself. When like I said, I don't remember the heroes, but it's where the the, pin, the turning point of the war where Holds Keep held them back and they broke the the orcs advance. Clyde would probably, if he was here, he could tell us. Huh, it's a shame he's not. I'm sure he would love to see this then. The Fibulous will jot down with the information he found here in his little notebook. Oh, these kind are of... papers. If you wanted, you could take them if you so wished. Yeah, they're not my papers to take, though. There is an owner of this mansion still. <laughs> Very true. But maybe when we uh turn in the... finish doing the deed here, we can always ask him for either copies or maybe he'll give them to us. Yeah, because, I mean, if Clyde still at Holt's Keep doing his thing, I mean, I'd happily take these and have them sent to him by messenger. You never know. Maybe there would be something good and useful for him to learn from, too. Yeah. But no crystal here. Nope. No crystal here. Although, I'm pretty sure if there was one down here, we'd hear it yelling. Yeah, I think we've gotten the one down in the basement. We probably need to go into the other side of the mansion and... I could have swore from the outside of this building there's a second floor. Yeah, I bet the second floor stairs is probably in the Great Hall area. Yeah, that would make sense for a mansion, wouldn't it? Yeah. Alright. Let's make our way back to the uh, other side of the mansion. As you move around and you pass through the area where you can kind of get your ear near the the doors to the great hall the preaching 
of the cult has gotten quiet. And it sounds like they are chanting or praying or something. In a language you don't recognize, it has a strange orc, sylvan, elven twist to it. And it sounds ancient. And there is a feeling of dread as you hear them whisper and chant. I'm a little whispering to him since they're right there going, I'm a little surprised us destroying two of those crystals hasn't gotten their attention. It is kind of surprising. Oh, and can we have the key lock the door behind us? It automatically locks the doors behind us when we leave the room. Oh, okay. But there were Faye in there. She goes, why don't you peek through and we can maybe burn them again with the light. Although I can't see very well when we do that. He will lower his goggles back into place and then take a peek through the keyhole. As you peek through the keyhole, you don't see anything. You see what was shadows at one point when you first were here. There's nothing. There's remnants of plates and glasses spewing about the ground that are all shattered. Then as you're staring, you hear the door slowly creak open that leads to the main great hall. Oh, Kalila's spinning around with her bow. As you spin and look, you see a massive skeletal what looks like a fae standing. He has a massive hook and chain wrapped around his spine and ribs and he is looking towards you his dark red eyes seem to pierce the the mild light that is around you no not again he steps off of this pedestaled area and moves as he passes Faye, they start to ash next to him. You have damaged what you do not comprehend. I need... Can I shoot him while he's talking? Nope. Initials. Ah, okay, fair. Say like rude trying to shoot someone while they're monologuing. That's just rude. Kalila's done it actually several times. She did it to your brother, in fact. Also, my role was a 21. Thank you. 26. So, Defibulous, top of round. What would you like to do? Surrendering is an option. I think you would like that. I would. I really would. So, this one giant skeletal angry guy? Yep. With chains everywhere, like wrapped around parts of him? Yep. I'm going to take aim for his spinal column. Okay. And try to shoot it and see what happens. Okay. I'm assuming he's in melee range at this point. He is moving quickly. Oh, I thought he was creeping through the door. No, the door swung open and is moving towards you. Oh, okay. Okay. 37. That is a hit. The 18 damage to his spinal cord. As the bullet strikes the spinal cord, you see this spark of black energy that just echoes through all of his bones. And he just laughs. All right. Well, seeing that he's laughing at me, I has an idea. Okay. I am afraid. You should be. What why is would your you idea? Be, why would you be afraid? Because it's you! <laughs> because we have been doing this show nearly three years. I know whenever you go, I have an idea. It usually ends in destruction and mayhem. Of your enemies. Not the point. All right. I'm going to, since it's a quick reload, quick reload is a minor quick action type thing for me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to slot in some sanctified bullets. 
Ooh, are those the ones that Clyde blessed or whatever? These are the ones we got from the Mexi store. Oh, nice. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that very soft. Oh, crap. Yeah, you're not going to like what I'm going to do either. I'm going to dead. I'm going to dead shot him. That's All right. Like, oh, God damn it. AC for this guy is 31. Oh, they do double damage against undead. Very nice. Very nice. Or demonic enemies. One second. Uh, shotgunning my desk with D10s. Nice. Yeah, I'm about to shotgun. If he lives through this, shotgun with a bunch of D6s. Okay, I feel absolutely dirty with what I just did here. God, Wonderful. What? what did you do? Break down. 494 damage. Jesus! Oh. Ow. That is a beautiful, I'm sorry, Dan. Beautiful moment. I'm just defibulous. I could just see him lining up, taking a defense that defensive stance in the door and just da -da 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 -da. Describe your kill. I feel dirty. <laughs> Fabulous, fearing that this thing is running at them very fast and seeing how terribly strong everything has been in here already and how painful it's been, decides to unload everything he has into the, into the creature and just takes aim at cr critical joints, parts of, the, of the, the abomination and just unloads everything he has. We're sending shards of black bone or whatever type of bone he is everywhere and bits of metal from his chain. Does he explode? Just... There's just nothing left. There's just solid beam of light that comes out of Defibulus's weapon as Kalila is literally seeing clip after clip drop out and get reloaded out of this boom stick. I was gonna say, I almost have this like mental image of like the Matrix style movements of Defibulus as he's loading and reloading and firing. As the holy light slowly disperses and the barrel of Defibulus's weapon slowly cools down, you see that the Great Hall is now clear. The sconces and the lights, or the sconces and the candles start to brighten as you start to see that the Great Hall has been fairly well destroyed by the pixie and the fae. There are tapestries and paintings that have been ripped and destroyed. The carpet that was once a beautiful purple is now burned in places. There's stains of different types of meat and other things that give it this ugly, destroyed look. What would you guys like to do next? Well, Kalila's ears, typically instead of like being flattened from the noise, is just straight up, full focused at Defibulous as she's still looking at him, waiting to see if he's smoking. Like, smoke coming off of him as she just looks at the thing completely obliterated, looks back at him, and goes... We need to get you more of those bullets. What? <laughs> she just holds up two thumbs with a really s big cat smile. Like, good job. I think it's dead. She nods. You killed it. What? To come up to his ears. You killed it. Oh. Why would I bill it? Ugh. He'll just face palm and wait for his ears to heal. Ah, uh, I really should. I think I blew out the silencer completely. Yeah. Oh yeah. There, so. there is just so. You know the old Bugs Bunny cartoons. The uh, how the uh, joke cigars would just split open. Banana, yeah, banana peel explosion in their face. Yeah, that's pretty much what you have at the barrel of your gun. Is just uh, fragments of. Uh, silencer. 
Well, I will. Ha he will take the fragments off, making sure they're cool enough to put it in a bag. And he goes, well, that will yield valuable information for building a new model. Just Okay, you might have something here with the whole using a rifle. Where's... Wait, where's the guy at? You obliterated him. Hmm. I guess something, Clyde had something you're on, was right about that holy nonsense anyway, then. Yeah, we need to get you more of those bullets. Considering I'm pretty sure that guy worked for the Bone God. Looked like it anyways, I could be wrong, but... Those are really effective. I have five bolt of those le bullets left. All right, well, when we're done clearing this manor, we're going to go back to Mexi and get you more. Right. Now, what um, I want to know is what happened to all 30 or however many Faye was in this room. Did I hit them too? No, as he was walking towards you guys, he was ashing them. Yeah, he cut all of them? He was absorbing them. Oh, I think he was absorbing the, uh, or consuming or something, but most of the Fae he took down on his warpath towards your bullets of death. Where did the bone, the angry lady go? I don't know. Now I'm curious on what one of those holy bullets would do to that, one of those crystals. Try it on the next one we find. But Kalila will, uh, advance into this room cautiously. Not necessarily stealthing, but on guard. The room is in, has seen better days, and as you get close enough, you can see the banisters and the spindles of the stairwell. That is a grand stairwell. They are all kicked in, broken, burned, chewed on. And at the top, where you would normally have that grand entrance, there is the tapestries of the Holy City. Holds keep the Rat Kingdom and the Elven Kingdom. They are old banners and they are burned to barely recognizable. It seems as if the Pixies did more than just take over this place. They were destroying what they could. Hmm. Kind of weird that they go out of their way to burn, burn all that. Yeah. I agree. She goes, well, we have a doorway off to our left, or we can try and make our way up the stairs. Uh, let's check off the left. Clear off the ground floor kind of idea? Yeah. Make sure there's no crystals in here. As you walk in, you can see the grand dining room. There's a large table in the center that spans nearly the whole length of the room with chairs of plenty which has large glass windows that look out towards a deck and beautiful maintained flowered yard the two pixies that are in, that were in here clearly are not in here anymore but all the dishes are smashed silverware stabbed into different segments of the wall wine bottles that still contained wine in them have been smashed and little handprints and footprints of the wall that are dripped in the wine staining the once pristine walls. And this poor Casimir is going to have so much to clean up. It doesn't look like there's any crystals here. She's going to gander out one of the windows make sure there's no crystal in the backyard kind of idea. As you look out there, you see those hell hounds have began to slowly patrol around. Any movement, they stop and they study, and if it is Fae, they seem to leap in and out of these flaming ring portals with ease, and it seems as if they have a, a fire in their step, and they are making sure that no Fae get anywhere close to the building. Good puppies. She goes, well, looks like upstairs is only left. All right, we should uh, probably cautiously go upstairs then. Agreed. Uppity up, sneakity sneak, quietity quiet. The top floor is 
quiet. You once in a while hear the the pitter of wings as you move up the steps quietly. This floor is mildly lit. The torches give off a blue hue to them. The plants on this floor are the ones that are in potted plants are black and corrupted and have a strange twist and gnarl to their bases. What would you guys like to do? Left or right? Go right this time since we went left last time. As you guys get to the first door, the doorway has been smashed open. You can peer inside and it looks like it once was a guest room. The bed is large and luxurious with a canopy that has been destroyed. You see remnants of an elven flag that has been shredded and there's still some smoldering flames on it. The dresser has been pulled open and the door drawers have been tossed aside and anything of what looks like might be of value may have been taken or destroyed. Is it me or is this seeming a little more personal with when it comes to this stuff? What do you mean? Well, I understand that, that these Fae are nuts and angry and violent and destructive, but they made sure to burn the banners downstairs. The banner up here is burned and smoldering, and the items that are of value have been... This place has been ransacked is what it is. It's not just random destruction. It's almost deliberate. Shows it could be. That or they could just take all the shinies and, hey, why not burn this thing? I don't know if it necessarily makes sense, but you do have a point. It it could be personal. Yeah, let's continue down and see if the rest of the upstairs is like that. I mean, the Bone God doesn't really like anything from the Holy City, it seems like, because, well, we're from the Holy City. So anything that represents order, they could have a personal vendetta against. I kind of get the feeling he doesn't like much of anything of anything. Other than himself? I don't think he likes himself. <laughs> As you move past this room and you come into a large sitting area, which seems to be mostly undisturbed, you see two paintings. One of the strange cleric and the large orc that wears the robes. Then you see the human with the other side, the the face and the body has been shredded, but you can kind of see remnants of pointed ears, elven maybe. The two pictures are clearly been painted side by side as the background kind of matches. And they are smiling and holding up what look like banners. One holy city, one rat folk, one of Holt's keep, and then the one that is shredded you do not see. She goes, based off of all the banners that we've seen, I'm going to guess that, much like the rest of the people in this town, this was an old adventuring party. They probably did something like we did, some crazy quest. Well... I'm kind of wondering, especially with the stuff downstairs, that I wonder, could these people have been the ones who turned the tide it holds keep all those years ago? It could be. But if that's the case, why is the one with the with potentially that looks like pointed ears always, it, it's not down, we didn't see that one downstairs. The elven flags are definitely destroyed. It's like that's like the one also one that doesn't ever seem to be there in any of the functional ones still. Maybe he got corrupt or went evil. I don't know why, but my guess is something bad happened. Hey, Dan, how long ago was the the, the stand at Holds Keep? I think yeah, he said it, about 100 years. Yeah, just about 100 years or so. Clyde's grandfather's era. Yeah, Gl Clyde's grandfather era is the, the time of the war when Holdskeep kind of... So it was basically like 
his grandfather would have been the duke at the time and his father would have been a warrior at the time and holds keep got its name because it held back the flood of orcs now if you want you can roll another intelligence check and i can try to give you more information if you roll high enough can we both uh i don't think the el the cat folk would have really kept records oh, okay on something I, like this i do have knowledge local but Okay. You might be able to put together, like, rumors that you've heard. But no, that's fair. She grew up in a tiny forest village. Why would she know? Yeah. Just uh, straight int, or is this a knowledge, like, knowledge check? Do you have local? Yes. I will let you do knowledge local. 24. Did you, say, 20... did you say knowledge yokel? Or nokel? With that roll, <laughs> you stare at these pictures and you begin to think and you remember and you kind of take this flashback back to when you were in school you sitting at the desk with your brother not paying attention probably doodling in his binders and the private tutor begins to talk about the orc war holds keep was last stand of the kingdoms and they sent out calls to all adventurers any who would be willing to take up a sword and fight for the kingdom to help push back the tide you remember that the people who helped could claim any treasure found in hold keeps keep so anything that they find in the the treasury people could claim from and you remember adventurers far and wide came but there was something and you, you think very hard and you remember two humans a half orc and an elf you can't really remember names but you remember it was a group a small group that chose to take on the forces head on you remember that the history books weren't exactly clear on how but this adventuring party was able to fight their way through hordes of orc to get to the war king and that they were able to defeat the war king but not without great cost to themselves when they came back they were all heavily injured and near death but you remember that instead of taking a day of celebration they chose to disappear into the history books they didn't want this day to be remembered as a day of celebration it was a day of death and you remember that each of the heroes claimed a prize from the massive cities that helped fight one took a treasure from holt's keep one took a treasure from the holy city one from the elven city and one from the rat kingdom the treasures were never actually said what they were but that that's what they did previous looking back oh remember he something it's a little fuzzy. I don't remember all the details. But Defibulus will explain to Kalila just everything he remembered from when he was on the, in school about this years ago. She'll listen. I'm not going to make you repeat it. <laughs> I appreciate that, because even if I wanted to repeat it, I couldn't get it done right. Right. We will re re just retell all of it to Kalila. I think we're dealing with the original group here. I guess the vampire? He also said he remembered the Lich and Everest were friends of this vampire. She goes, I wonder if Everest is one of the humans. I don't know if Liches change in appearance. Huh. Well, I mean, if that's the case, because uh, the vampire is a human, right? Yes. All There's right, so two humans. Two one humans. would be a half-orc and an elf. What was the lich? 
you couldn't tell. Because but it's he a was, lich. Because it was a lich, but he was also much bigger than Everest. And looking at the paintings, you can kind of get that Everest and the lich, or Everest and what you assume is Everest, and this orc, half-orc, seemed pretty close. Like, they're... The, the half-orc has his hand around his shoulder, and they're both closer than just friends. So I wonder if that's the lich, the half-orc. Ever should be the human. So the elf is missing, which is the one ripped off, off of all of the tapestries. I wonder why. I don't know. All right, let's... Well, we can find ask, the crystals. Yeah, yep. find yeah. the crystals. Solve the problem here first, and then we can ask the va- vampire. The yeah, Casimir. Casimir. Yeah, thanks. Down the hallway. Down the hallway. There is a door to the east of where you're standing as well. You can kind of see the two little notches. Do they sense weird woojis coming from it? Yes, you do. Ah, snap. She goes, okay. She'll take a deep breath, focus in, going, it's just a stupid crystal. Ready, Defibulous? Yep. Got those blessed bullets in there? Last cartridge of them. She'll open the door for him as he takes aim. As you open the door, you can feel your heart pounding in your ears. As we call this week's episode, right here. Well, 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 me friends. It seems as if the adventurers have made it to the second floor of Kazimaz Manor. With the fibulous casting holy light from his rifle and destroying the strange fey queen in a hail of bullets and holy light. The adventurers make it up to the second floor, finding truths about the Lich, Kazimar, Everest, and an unknown elven hero. Seems as if these adventurers that lived here, friends of Kazimar, were the ones who fought and helped stive off the original war with the orcs. The Day of Blood. Well, friends, with that revolution well in mind, the adventurers have still a crystal to deal with. But, unfortunately, That is all the time we have for this eve. For the moon is high, and it is time for us to say farewell. As always, me friends, may the dice gods bless your every roll. We here at What the Dice would like to thank Paizo for creating Pathfinder, Epidemic Sound for our music, as well as Sirenscape for our sound effects. If you would like to reach out to us, you can do so on Facebook at What the Dice Pod, Twitter at What the Dice Pod, and of course email What the Dice Pod at gmail.com. And if you liked our little adventure, please share us with your friends and rate and review us. 